And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Joan Crawford as Clara in The Ten Years by Mel Dinelli. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. You see how clearly I remember things? I remember so well the horror of that moment when Doug's little friend finished telling me how he had left Doug there alone with my sister Adele. And I even remember what Roy said at the end. So I came back to tell you, Mrs. Foley, on account of Doug made me. Now I wish I hadn't left him there with her. I know she's your sister and all, but I saw her face when she came to the window. She looked awful, Mrs. Foley. She looked awful crazy. I followed Roy's directions, and I went by foot north along the ocean. I must have walked a good mile before I came to the house. The front door was standing open. There was a lamp burning on the table. Adele. She lay on the bed. I couldn't see her very clearly by the candlelight. But I could see that she was fully dressed. Her hair was undone and it spilled down over the pillow. For a moment I thought... I thought she was dead. What do you want? Adele. What do you want? It's me, Clara. Where's Douglas? He's dead. Adele! Your husband is dead, I I don't think. mean my husband. I mean my son. Where is he? He was murdered with a long shot. Be still! You don't know what you're saying. Where is my son? I haven't seen him. You have. He was here. I know that. I haven't seen him. Yes, you have. Try and remember. Where is he? I don't know. Yes, you do know. What have you done to him? Was he your son? Yes, Adele. Please. I hated him. I know. Where is he, Adele? He went away. Where? Where did he go? He went to the village for a doctor. Are you telling me the truth? Yes. How long ago did he leave? I don't admit. Will you stop questioning me? Can't you see that I'm sick? I tell you he went for a doctor. Why do you come here, Clara? After ten years. I've come to help you. I don't need your help. Adele, did Doug really go for the doctor? You think I'm lying? I don't know. But if he isn't back soon, I'm going for the police. The police? Those fat fools. (laughs) I'm so sick, Clara. Oh, I know. I'm going to take your things off, Adele. You'll be more comfortable. Then when the doctor comes, if he comes... Don't you touch me! You're sick, Adele. Let me take your things off. No, no! Can't you leave me alone? Leave me alone! How do you know what's good for me after all these years? (laughs) I'm in pain, Clara. I have a heavy pain here by my heart. When I'm tightly laced, I can almost bear it. All right. All right, darling. We'll leave it till the doctor comes. Will the doctor help me, Clara? Of course he will. Douglas Foley came between two sisters. Oh, dear. He worked in the garden, bending down low. I'm so tired, Clara. I know. Try and rest, Adele. Close your eyes. He was working in the garden, and I was on my way home. I saw him there, Clara. He looked the same after ten years, because he had your strength to draw from. But I was alone. I had grown old, and he had stayed young. Young. And then he... And then she seemed to doze off. Her breathing was so labored. And I thought, perhaps she'll rest more easily if I undress her. And I went over to the bed. She was wearing a corset. I reached over and I began to unhook it. She started 
mumbling something in her sleep. You broke your promise. Always and forever, you had said. But she didn't wake up. Always. I finally managed to take her corset off. But as, as I went to place it on a chair, I noticed something sticking out of the material. At first, I thought it was a broken stay, but it was round, and one end was sharp. I looked closer. It was a steel knitting needle. A long steel one. And there was rust on it. Or was that brown stain rust? Adele had concealed a knitting needle, and there was proof of what I guess I'd always known, that Adele had murdered my husband. I dropped the needle to the floor. Then something caught my eye. There was a hand sticking out from beneath the bed. It was white and still. It was a child's hand. I fell to my knees. Oh, Doug, Doug. And just as I reached out for him, I... I felt a sharp blow on the back of my head. And I fell unconscious. I dreamed that Adele and I were children again, that she was laughing, and we were playing an old game of ours where we tied each other up with our bathrobe cords, and then we waited for a knight in armor to rescue us. And then I think it was the odor of kerosene that brought me to. The room was filled with it. Oh, my head was pounding. I couldn't seem to focus my eyes. I tried to raise myself to my feet, but I... I... I couldn't seem to move my arms, my legs. Suddenly I realized why. I was tied with a bathrobe cord. I was a child again. Adele and I were playing our games again. My husband and everything that had happened between Adele and me had been nothing but a bad dream. Oh, a feeling of relief swept over me. Suddenly, I, I heard footsteps, and the door creaked slowly open. And then I knew that what had happened had not been a dream, for Adele stood there in the doorway. Not Adele, the child who would rescue me, but Adele with gray hair who hadn't spoken to me for all those years. She wore a long dressing gown. She was barefoot, her long hair streaming about her shoulders. And there was a vacant, stupid smile on her face. She carried a bucket in her hand. And the odor of kerosene filled the room. She didn't seem to notice me as she went past me. She threw the liquid from the bucket onto the bed. No! Adele! No, Adele! But she paid no attention to me as she left the room again. I struggled. I struggled wildly, but it was no use. Oh, I was tied securely, and then I saw a still figure on the bed. It was Doug. Oh, his face was so white. He was unconscious, and there was a deep gash at the side of his head. And then Adele came back into the room. She had filled that bucket to the brim, and she walked toward the bed again. Clara? Adele, untie me. And are you why? Adele, listen to me. This is your son, Clara. Yes, yes, Adele, untie me. We were looking for him, and he was here all the time. Please, untie me, Adele. I never knew your son. For years, I never knew him. How old is he, Clara? He's only ten. He's just a boy. Adele, you're sick. Untie me, and we'll go for a doctor. You want me to be well, Clara? Yes. Untie me. Are we friends again, Clara? Yes, we're friends. I want to help you. But I can't forget the ten years, Clara. <gasps> I must wash those years away before we can really be friends oh, again. Oh, Adele, forget those years. Let me help you. <laughs> untie me. No. <gasps> we can't forget them, Clara. We must wash them away. <gasps> That's what I was doing. <gasps> I was washing away the years. <laughs> Your husband's gone. Your son is all that remains of him. 
Then we can be sisters again. You don't know what you're doing. Untie me, Adele. But this isn't water that I have in the sink. No, you, you see, you're sick. But I put into the lamps to make them burn. No! I could burn away the ears. Oh! Then that would be better. Oh, Much no! Better. No, no, Adele, for the love of heaven, untie me! 